Internal parasites, or better known as worms, are much more common in the equine industry than most people think. Most horse owners do not even know that about 90% of worms occur in a horse's own environment. While it is a common occurrence in horses, there are a multitude of ways to properly rid or prevent these parasites from occurring. In this presentation, how internal parasites affect horses in the equine industry will be addressed and what the essential steps to treating them will be talked about. I would just like to start off with a disclaimer before I begin. It is important that you contact your local veterinarian for proper care and treatment if you suspect that your horse has worms. These are just recommendations that you will see within the next few slides. Every horse is different and may require multiple or even very different treatments than what I will talk about. Your local veterinarians will be able to properly treat your horse with what they believe is best. According to Oklahoma State University Extension, internal parasites or worms are organisms that live a portion of their life cycle in a host animal. For horses, these worms live in their organs, most commonly in the stomach, body cavities, tissues, or essentially anywhere they can live and receive nutrients from the host animal. In order for worms to succeed in a host animal, they must go through the life cycle stages outside of their environment first. The way worms continue to live inside the host are by eggs first being exerted by feces that get laid out into the pasture. In the pasture, these eggs begin to develop into larvae where horses will graze upon or drink the larvae from water. These larvae can live for up to 31 weeks in the winter and only a few short weeks in the summertime. This is where the horse becomes infected with an internal parasite, but they are not in their complete form yet. These immature larvae or worms find tissues or organs to settle into in order to develop into a mature parasite. For some horses, this cycle will continue and spread to other pasture mates if not taken care of. Unfortunately for a horse, there are many worms that a horse can be affected by. Because there are so many parasites that a horse can be affected by, I am going to address the more common types found throughout horses in the United States. The two most common types of internal parasites are large and small strong isles. Roundworms, tapeworms, and threadworms are very similar to each other, and then bots and pinworms will be addressed as well. As I said before, there are tons of other types of parasites, so it is possible that your horse may have a different type of internal parasite. Once upon a time, the most common and used to be the most threatening parasite in the 1970s were the large strong isles. These parasites are also known as bloodworms and affect a horse's mesenteric artery. These worms swim through large intestine where they bury themselves into the arteries. Over the years, horses have been less likely to get large strong isles due to treatments and preventatives. Small strong isles are the most common parasite today in the horses. These parasites overtake the lining of the large colon. Young horses are the most likely to be affected by these worms. Roundworms are very large in size and pass through feces in young horses. Foals will ingest these eggs and the larvae travels to the small intestine. These roundworms are extremely resistant and can live for 5 to 10 years if left untreated. Many of these roundworms have grown a resistance to dewormers, which is why these parasites can be so hardy. Tapeworms are shaped like flatworms and are roughly 3 inches in length. These parasites require an immediate host that feed on horse feces. When ingested, these worms will attach to the ileocecal junction and find their ways to the lungs. Tapeworms mostly affect young foals or horses that are younger than about four years old. Threadworms are parasites that affect foals as little as four days old. These parasites come from ingesting their mother's milk or embedding. The life cycle for threadworms is only two weeks long, therefore preventatives at birth are very important. Pinworms occur around the anus of a horse where female will lay eggs around the hind region. If left untreated, they become hardy and resistant to treatment. While I will address symptoms later, the most common one for pinworms is tail rubbing. Bots are the last internal parasite that I will address today. Bots are not worms inside of a horse's stomach. They are actually larvae from a bot fly. You can see these tiny bot eggs that are a yellow-orangey color on horse's legs or the throat. The larvae will hibernate in the gums for about four months before traveling to the lining of the stomach where they will live for up to nine months before passing through fecal matter. After mentioning all the different types of parasites that can occur on a horse, we need to know how to suspect if your horse has them. Symptoms of parasites or worm infections are fairly common signs of many other syndromes or diseases, so again, it is important that you speak to your veterinarian about anything unusual or any unusual behavior in your horse. Horses with internal parasites can expect to show weight loss, diarrhea, constipation, colic, 
rough hair coat, or respiratory problems. Horses with respiratory problems will show nasal discharge, excessive coughing, or uneven breathing. Other symptoms can include tail rubbing, or horses will have a pot belly or a swollen belly. In order for a veterinarian to diagnose your horse with internal parasites, they have to do a fecal egg count of the horse's feces. Essentially, whoever is doing the testing will count the number of eggs found in the fecal matter. Depending on the egg count, you can determine how low or high the horse's exposure is to the parasite. Horses with low exposure of the parasite are going to have less than 200 eggs per gram in their fecal count, while horses with a medium exposure will have anywhere between 200 to 500 eggs per gram. Horses with a high exposure typically have over 500 eggs per gram. Based on the level of exposure, additional testing may be required, and the following steps of treating the pa specific parasite like strong isles or roundworm are expected. Anthelmintics can either be a preventative or used as a treatment. There are three different kinds of anthelmintics, ivermectins, benzimidazoles, and parentals. Ivermectins are effective at low doses, destroy adult worms and larvae, and effective for most parasites. Benzimidazoles are effective for most nematodes, but do not give it to the horse if it has tapeworm. Pyrantals kill off most types of parasites as well and slowly. It is a paste and only takes one dose usually. There are other effective anthelmintics for specific types of parasites. For proper prevention, dewormer should only be given every six months. Timing of administration for dewormers is crucial because parasites can develop resistance if they are given too often. Talk with a veterinarian about what is right for you and for your horse. Some of these pastes, like strong and paste, are meant for foals at two months of age and are only effective on large strong owls, pinworms, and roundworms, whereas Quest Plus gel is effective on all kinds of parasites and are for horses six months or older. Some techniques to keep internal parasites out of your herd are very simple. Rotating different horses in different pastures to keep them from ingesting feces is a great way to prevent any internal parasites. Cleaning stalls and replacing bedding daily to avoid laying in or ingesting their own feces is also another great preventative. Another great management technique is grouping together different species like horses, cows, goats, or chickens allows for possible parasites to be ingested by a different species where they cannot survive. Lastly, horses at different ages have different immunities. Grouping together based off age is smart. By doing these techniques, you can achieve little to no parasites in your herd. As I mentioned before, I would just like to address that are, there are a multitude of parasites that can affect your horse, so please contact your local veterinarian and they will be able to treat your horse accordingly to what their needs are.